Now, we've enjoyed the pleasure of eating our ice cream and then eating the cone that it comes in, but have you ever enjoyed a coffee and then eaten the cup as well? And on the other hand, we've all experienced the not so enjoyable cleaning days packed with chemical smells. Well, today we'll talk to the clever women that are shaping the world of sustainability and taking the next step with their clever businesses. Tick Her starts right now. Tick Her, in association with Lift Women, inspiring female founders. Welcome to Tick Her. I'm Jamila Jallo and it is my pleasure to be here to talk all things business with women who are making a difference. And today we'll be diving into the next stage along the entrepreneurial journey, scaling. And discussing this with me today are some incredible women who have had their taste of the corporate world and have gone on to become successful entrepreneurs making a difference in the world with their sustainable businesses. Now, Tick Her celebrates the talents, skills and determination of women worldwide, bringing guests who have successfully achieved their business goals or are taking the first steps of an exciting new venture by sharing it loud and saying it proud. And remember, whilst Lift Women are the presenting sponsors of today's discussion, all of the views and opinions are of course our own. Now, my first guests today come from Good Eddy, a company that is solving the issue that comes with the world's coffee addiction. And the issue isn't coffee here, it is the waste. And with this shared vision to make a difference in our planet, co-founders Catherine Hutchins and Anio Rahabi launched Good Eddy and the edible coffee cup was born. And Catherine and Anayo join me now. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you guys are going today? Very good. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Guys. Now, let's just start with what's the reality with this issue that's at hand? What are the numbers? Why have you decided to launch Good Eddy? Sure. So every day in Australia, we are disposing of 2.7 million cups. That's 1 billion per year. Wow. And 90% of these cups go to landfill. So majority of the takeaway cups, they are lined with plastic. So they are not recyclable or biodegradable. So they create a lot of uh, plastic pollution and water pollution. And uh, there are solutions out there that they claim to be uh, eco-friendly, but unfortunately, they, because there is no infrastructure for them to process them, they also end up in landfill. And the reusable cup uptake has been very, very slow, although they have been around for many years. So all in all, we create a lot of waste mm. sending in all these disposable cups because of the habit that we have for yeah. taking cups to the landfill. Absolutely. And with, with Good Eddy, I mean, does, how does the product work? Do you have to eat it in order for it to be sustainable or is, is there another option? You don't have to eat okay. it. Of course, it's really delicious yeah. when you do. And um, after you had your coffee or maybe even your gelato in the cup, then it's really nice to snack on the cup afterwards. Yeah. Um, but if you don't want to eat it, you can plant it, you can put it in the compost. Wow. Um, and even if it does end up in the normal bin, then it will break down naturally as well. Right. So how? What's what are these cups made of then? So I've got some some of them here. They're very they're very sturdy. And how how does it go with with absorbing? Does it absorb the liquid that's in it, or how does how long does it last? So it will last for forty five minutes, um, staying crispy. Yeah. And it won't leak for several hours. And Amazing. that depends on the temperature of what you put in. And uh, it's made of oats and grain. So it's like a waffle cone, but oh. a bit less sweet. So it really is just like a, uh, like an ice cream cone, but for your coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, how about, how did you guys get to where you are as a business now? I mean, we've been talking about the scaling step along the entrepreneurial journey. How did you get to where you are today? So it's um, been um, a couple of years that we are working on this. Uh, both of us, we are corporate, um, we have yep. corporate background and we have been in food processing and packaging. And we really wanted to do something that has a bigger impact. So with the knowledge that we have with the packaging, it's very easy to realize that how much waste is produced. So we took that knowledge, we uh, applied it to a big problem like a disposable cup. And uh, we, we wanted to create a solution that it is waste free. And after doing a lot of research, we thought the only thing that is waste free is that's something that you can eat. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the first step was doing a lot of trials to find a recipe, then uh, was just learning about a startup because we didn't know anything. Yeah. So it's just learning a lot of skill set to build your business from scratch. Um, and it was the fundraising step that we need to raise capital to set up our production. We wanted everything to be local and we managed to do that. So we did a bit of crowdfunding and uh, we did a seed round. 
And uh, since um, June last year, we set up our production here in Melbourne and producing crops here. Amazing. Um, so yeah, it's been um, a lot of learnings, but it has been definitely a very enjoyable journey as well. Yeah, and I mean, you touched on crowdfunding. I know that's been definitely a theme with our, throughout our, our TikTok. How, how has that process been for you? What have you guys been crowdfunding for? And I mean, it is a very local aspect. What, is that, what has that experience been like as a small, as a startup business? Yeah, we found it really good. Um, it was quite early on. So we'd uh, hit the concept, we'd started to prove the concept and join the crowdfunding. Um, you know, one of the main things is you want to sort of raise the funds to be able to yeah. um, do your project. And we did a, a reward based one so that people would um, give us some uh, money onto the crowdfunding platform and then we would set up our production and we'd give them the cups that they ordered oh, um, later on. So that was really nice. And uh, one of the really big benefits that we found from doing the crowdfunding as well is really seeing if the market and consumers were mm. ready to buy our cups yeah. and try our cups. And we got such a positive response that um, we knew that from that, that our idea was going to work and it was going to be a success. Yeah, well, it certainly has been a success. I mean, it, they, these are such a great idea and I've definitely seen them around. So what about what's next for Good Eddie? What can we see in the future for you guys? So we have basically had really good market response, but for us to have a bigger impact, not only in Australia, but um, overseas, we really want to scale up. So mm -hmm. we are looking at uh, investing on a high capacity line. Again, it's going to be local here in Australia. So that increases our capacity, higher number of the cups, and uh, reduces our unit per co uh, the cost of units. So more people can enjoy it and we can have a broader impact in um, in Australia and overseas. Amazing. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us on Ticker today. Um, it's very exciting, a very fun story, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank, thank you. you. Now over to my next guest who has started by making cleaning solutions in their kitchen and after gaining popularity amongst friends and family, she decided to go legit. Chelsea Kranzbuehler is not only the co-founder of Uclove Clean, but she's also a woman in tech who's in charge of the products development and research with an impressive corporate background. And Chelsea joins me now. Thanks for being on Ticker today. Thanks, Jamil. How are you? Thank I'm you great. For of course. Now, how did you manage to go from making these solutions in your kitchen to transforming it into a full-fledged business? What has that journey been like for you? So um, I have to credit some of that to, to my mum, I've got to say. So I grew up with my mum being very much um, a natural, using natural resources for cleaning and, and, and for our own, you know, medical ailments from you know, you're using aloe vera on burns that she grew in the garden to all her herbs that she grew in a garden and essential oils were a massive um, focus of how she cleaned our house and for me that just I sustained that through you know being a mom and a wife in my own home um, and the blends that my mum created I always used in my home and where everybody who came to my home always just would say how what is what are you using this smells amazing mm. it just smells clean and fresh and so I was you know giving those blends away to my friends until you know that epiphany happened where you know we said this is something we should be doing for everyone we should not be using chemicals in any house yeah, I mean, I, since this epiphany that you had to make this a fully fledged business, I mean, you've you've had some significant growth being stocked in hundreds of stores. So, what does it mean yes. to be? I mean, we've been talking about the scaling stage on the journey of um, being an entrepreneur. So, what has it been mm -hmm. like to be at the scaling stage, and what does it mean for a business to be scalable? So it's just scary, as you said. You know, we started, you know, very small um, in our kitchen, in our garage, and had to move to a factory you know, to, to keep up with demand. Um, and it's a scary stage in a business because, you know, even though your demand is going up, the costs are going up and, and the way you need to, to produce shifts and changes very much. You need more support, you need more people. Um, so it's a, it's a big step and it's a scary step in a small yeah, business. Um, sure. So you've got to be confident sure. and understand where you're going long term. You know, that's, I think, the, the most important piece is how do you see it in the future you see it keep you know this is something you want to keep going and keep growing and if it is you've got to work through that process and that investment and take the scary steps 
Mm, absolutely. Now, we understand you've experienced juggling two high pressure roles. So how do you find the time to balance both? And what secrets do you have perhaps um, in relation to time management? Okay, well, I think the balance, uh, the, the process is people and friend, you know, family. Um, my husband is, you know, is strongly uh, incorporated and in, in managing this as, as much as anyone. Um, so people around you and who, who you have with you make a big difference in, in balancing things and, and helping you scale those things. But um, as, a, as a woman, I, you know, I think there's, there's no secret. Prioritisation, I think, is everything. Mm. You're a mom, and, and you have other priorities. You just have to work out what's the most important thing to be focusing on. Um, and sometimes you have to think about what you've got to let go or delegate and, and, you know, find the right things that you've got to do at the right time. Absolutely. Now, before we wrap up, Chelsea, what lies ahead uh, for you, Clove Clean? What can we see in the future? Well, we have an amazing and engaging, loyal customer base who give us all the, you know, things that they want to see being still developed um, from us. So we have a great future of product that we're, we're already starting to develop based on, on what people are asking for. So, you know, we don't want to stop. It would be great that just every cupboard you open in a, you know, a home under a sink or in a laundry um, is, is all natural products. There's no chemicals required. So we will just keep going as people keep, you know, giving us exciting challenges um, to develop products for the home. We, we do that. Oh, amazing. Well, Chelsea, thank you so much for sharing your story on Ticker today and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Well, that's all we have time for on today's episode of Tick Her. Thank you for joining us and be sure to head over to tickernews.co for breaking stories from around the world and tickeroriginals.co for content surrounding a myriad of topics. I'm Jamila Jallo. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you soon. Yeah.